I had a later than normal night for me. I know. I feel for you right now because I know you like to be in bed by sunset. And in so, the winter, that's challenging. Yeah, it's like 4.30, <laughs> but you, were, you went out well, late. I had, I had the wonderful, remarkable honor to give Lionel Richie a Lifetime Achievement Award last night at the UN. <laughs> and so here's, here's a photo, both... Uh, Lionel Richie and Judy Woodruff from PBS. Oh, how were incredible! Honored. My goodness. International Quality of Life Awards, oh. and so my presentation wasn't till a little bit later. But how'd you, how'd you do? I don't. I not as well as he did, because he Come got on. the award. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. But he he you're, he says hi. I know you're a fan, and and Lionel truly is such an American treasure. Born in Alabama, raised in Alabama. And I had never found out from him, and I've known him almost 20 years, I never found out how he really got his big break. And he told me last night, there was an artist by the name of Clarence Carter, who performed, you know him? Slip away? Okay. So. Okay. So Clarence, Clarence apparently had, had booked this club uh -huh. for years, and Lionel wanted to get a gig in that club on a night. He was shut out for a long time because Clarence owned the stage. You know, he had, that was his right. slot. That was his gig. Well, now, is this, is this, this is pre, while he's with the Commodores I or think pre Commodores? It's pre, it's pre Commodores. Okay. So um, he gets a phone call that Clarence is sick one night, and Lionel comes in and he, he does Lionel Richie. And apparently that was the last night before that was the last night Clarence Carter was at that club. Lionel <gasps> took over and just owned that club and that audience and then built his career wow. from there. Wow. Wow. Which is it's always interesting to see like what was the what was the moment was where thing? you where you break through. Right. And he said he was gonna be a pastor at one point. I mean all these great he's like tell me story and I've known him. Yeah. He's gonna be a pastor at one point and then he decided he liked to flirt too much so he figured that wouldn't work out. Yeah. <laughs> he really is special. He is he's easy like Sunday morning. Yeah. You know everything about him is he is he, every, when he speaks, he speaks, and you just say, mm-hmm. Well, his mother was a teacher. <laughs> and he, he is like a preacher in a way, the way, he, mm -hmm. the way he speaks and tells stories. And he told the story last night that every day he wakes up, even when he's tired, and he looks in the mirror, and he says, it could be any face. And I look in the mirror, and I see Lionel Richie. <laughs> and I love being Lionel Richie. And I like when he wakes up. What time does he wake up oh. again? He, this is this is the best part of being Lionel Richie. So we're at this event, and he says to me, oh, you know, I know they serve food, but he's like, we're probably going to go for some dinner after. Now, it's 11.01. Right. Oh, right. I don't know what's open at 11.08. And away. you are, at, are, at this point, you are in full panic. Yes. Because normally, you've been asleep for at least for, three to five hours. I'm almost ready right. to get up. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I said, no, I, I think I'll pass. I did ask his girlfriend, Lisa, I said, can I ask you a question? I want to tell Kelly this tomorrow morning. She says, what? I said, how long have you guys been together? She says, eight years. She's from Switzerland. A wonderful, lovely woman. I said, what time do you guys go to bed? She said, well, I mean, our, 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 our normal work night's 3.30 a.m. She said, but we set the alarm for noon. Right. They set the alarm They set for the noon. alarm for noon. So he'll never see this. 